Hello viewers, here is another work of Medea Environment Appliances. This time a stand, fi uh, not a stand fan, a tower fan. My grandmother got one of these, it wasn't this exact model, it was a different model. Uh, but she got a tower fan a number of years ago. I always thought it was dumb, it was kind of a joke that we had. And uh, I never had a tower fan in my collection, because I thought they were dumb. <laughs> Uh, but when I saw this one for next to free, I figured this would be a good opportunity to get one into my collection. So this one is branded Pelinus. And, uh, you know, actually, I guess these things aren't that bad. You know, it's kind of a practical um, form factor, if you will, in a lot of different applications. So this one is pretty dusty. we got to open this up and clean it out. It's got a timer control up here so you can set it for up to two hours of run time and then it cuts off by itself. Not exactly sure how this disassembles. It does have an oscillation on it and I think that's powered by like a um, what's it called? One of those synchronous motors. Now I'm going to take a guess that this comes apart from these two screws here. Which are, of course, going to be very awkward to get out. What I usually do with these things is I take a, a high precision knife like this. This one here. This uh, is brand Exacto. And I try to go around here and you don't want to cut into it but I try to get the knife in between the uh, the thing and the, the plastic and then pull it up. This is not uh, coming easily at all. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's number one, and we do have a screw. It looks like a weird screw, but I think it's just a standard Phillips common combination thing. Okay, let's get this one out. Those are now out. And I think we can just take a screwdriver now and remove these two screws. See if that did anything. <laughs> it doesn't really seem to have done anything. Come on, screw, get out of there. No, oh, is it not all the way out? But, it still doesn't seem to have made any kind of a difference. Oh, here we go. What's this? Maybe this has some kind of tabs on the front here that are not releasing. Nope, that's not a good idea. Okay. 
Now we can see into there to find out what the problem is. All right, well that's, oh, I see what those screws did. So that did release that, but I don't know what that does for me. Um, well, let's try the other end. There's two screws here. Let's see if, if these will do something for me. That wasn't in the picture. Daggone it. Okay, well that had to come off anyways, so that's fine. But, I don't think that really did anything. Well, there's two screws there. And maybe I'll give those a shot. One of them looks to be kind of stripped out. I have a feeling this is a mistake to undo these first. These are all different sizes too, so this is going to be a thrill reassembling it. Today, there we go. All right, so those screws go on the bottom. That goes on the stand, and that goes in the top. All right, did that make any kind of a difference at all? It does not seem to have done anything. I think it has to come off from the top. The question is, how? All right, so the screws that release it are right there and right there, which have to be undone from this side. I don't know what kind of a moron designed this van. But clearly, there's absolutely no intention for this to be serviced. Now, I still can't even get the thing apart. Because there's something else holding it in now. This is absolutely insane. I don't know if I can get to this screw because the angle is so bad. I don't like it. Looks like I might be able to. And there's got to be a better way to put this back together because there's no way I'm going to align these screws at this angle. It's just not realistic. So hopefully as I'm inside of here, I can discover perhaps the way it's supposed to come apart or something. Because uh, this is just going to be nothing more than a big pile of scrap plastic if this is really the way it works. All right, so there's that. We can see the top bearing there. And it looks like there's some kind of a, a clip to push in here to release this front guard. That's really uh, quite sturdy. Exactly sure how I expected to push that down and out. Not on this planet. All right. Well, let's just keep going on this side. It's not getting anywhere up there. One of two screws that may never get back put in place.
I see screws down here. I don't think they're the right ones, but I'm going for them because don't really have any other options at this point. Now well, again, that did seemingly nothing for me. The only other thing I can possibly think of and again, this would be kind of neurotic if this is the way it works. There's screws that hold that black air duct in inside there. I don't even think I have a driver long enough to get to these. Well, I think actually I do. I'm going to try and undo all of these and see if uh, I can get it out this way. And again, I don't know how in the world one is supposed to put this back together. There's got to be something I'm missing here. It can't possibly be this difficult. Because this was made in 2008. It wasn't made last year. It should still be able to be taken apart. I can't reach it on that side. Looks like it may be starting to split a little bit. Uh, I think I can see some kind of a clip there. Let's see if I can undo something here. Yeah, there we go. That did something. Definitely another one there. Maybe that's how it works. Alright, maybe this isn't so bad after all. Perhaps the manual would have notated something like that, perhaps not, I don't know. Let's see, do we have the same thing on the other side? I think so. Alright, and we're in. Now, had I removed this first, I would have been able to get to these other screws up here. Alright, so, maybe it's not so bad. See, this is why knowledge is so powerful. Because if we knew that, then this whole thing wouldn't be so ridiculous. Now, I can get this thing out with relative ease. So these screws are for the air channel thing, and there are six of them. This screw is for the little metallic piece there, and these two screws are for the metal plate on the bottom, and in this screw no, I wonder where this one came from. That's a uh, unidentified for now. All right, so 
these two screws up here at the top should release the bearing. Actually, these screws can just stay on there. Oh, more screws. Actually, there's a fair bit of uh, lubrication in there. That's good. A good sign. <sighs> All right. Well, that seems to spin pretty freely still. So now down over at this end, can I move this? That's tight. Okay, so here's the wheel. It's actually a lot smaller than you'd think, based off the size of the fan. Um, it actually has a bouncing weight on there, which is kind of interesting to see on, on a relatively cheap appliance. This is uh, definitely got some dirt on it. I guess that's the date code there, 2007, 1020. Very precise. And just to show exactly how much dust uh, excuse me is in here. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's gross. This has got a lot of hours on it. But uh, it seems to run just fine still. The motor uh Actually, the motor looks like it has a really good spin down time still. It's a fully enclosed motor. Interesting. Okay, so this I believe is ready to come out. Now the motor I'm going to hit another roadblock here because the motor screws cannot be reached with this oscillation mechanism in place. Um, it looks like I may have to remove the motor from its mount and then I think there's a bolt that I can get to if the motor wasn't in place. Nope, that uh, 
that bolt does not undo the motor. I mean the oscillation mechanism. Not really sure what does. Now the capacitor's got to come out. And then I can take out this front guard. that coming out now. Oh, are you for real? It's got crazy little tabs all over the place. This one seems like it's going to end up breaking. Yeah, I hate the design of this thing. It's awful. Ouch. Almost there. Um, you know what I think is holding this on is this little circular clip thing here at the bottom. I think that may be holding this on. And aren't those just my favorite clip? I don't have the right kind of tool for getting these off. So this is always a thrill. Actually that wasn't too bad. Okay. That's not exactly what I was expecting. Actually, it's kind of clever. It's got a little ball there that latches into place. So if it, um, you know, if it jammed up, it wouldn't just wear out the motor. Now it looks like <laughs> it looks like in order to get the. Um, the wire is separated, I'm going to have to do some cutting. Which is not exactly ideal. Um, let's see, I'm going to remove this arm. Again, plenty of lubricant here, which is good to see. Now sometimes these things will come off the wires and you don't have to cut anything off. 
hopefully such will be the case here. So what I kind of try to do is just crimp them the opposite way they were crimped on. And oftentimes that will loosen them up a little bit. And I can just pull them off. Well, such does not seem to want to be the case here. Oh, yeah, such is the case here. Oh, but of course they got a stinking metallic thing in there. Okay, let's see here. How many wires come out of here? One, two, three, four. There's two black ones, so it doesn't make anything easier to trace. Well, I think... Oh, that's capacitor. I'm trying to think of which side is going to be less confusing to put back on. There's a lot more slack on these. So I think I'm just going to cut over at this side. Just putting it together is going to be much easier. I don't think I can get this to go back on there. No, we'll have to address that later. Um, okay. So I'm going to cut this uh, tie wrap off. So that can't be there. I'm going to cut this tie wrap off because it's making things too difficult to work with. And... Okay. So... We have... Blue to blue, that's relatively easy to deal with. We have black to black, that's also relatively easy to deal with. And then we have brown to brown, and that's pretty simple. And then we have Pastor. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm cutting this intentionally like this so that when I go to rewire it, oops, have a reference point of what goes where. I'm going to leave this one intact, like this, so we know that, actually I guess it doesn't tell me which, uh, doesn't tell me which one's going to, well you know what we'll do? I'll strip this one a little bit, and the stripped one will go back to the stripped one. So now, I can remove this mechanism, remove that. Um, I want to take this off because I don't want that to get wet. Right, and now I can remove, um, I guess there's no reason to remove this motor mount. Alright, so, um, with all that done, we can now begin the washing process of this, which is not going to be a walk in the park by any stretch of the imagination. Especially, not this blower wheel.
the camera is running out of charge and quite frankly so am I. So I'm going to close up for now and we'll finish this up tomorrow. Okay we're back now. I cleaned everything yesterday except for this control panel. So I'm going to, oh wow this is really making a mess on here. I'm going to remove everything out of this control panel so that we can clean this as well. Okay, that came out fairly easily. We'll clean the knob because that can be kind of hard to clean afterwards. Um, and then we'll clean this up and then be ready to reassemble. Okay, now we're going to go into the motor. And if this is like the other one that I serviced a while ago, then this has kind of a unique design which I'll underscore once we get in. So I'm going to wipe some of the excess dust off of here. And that's good enough. I'm not worried about anything beyond that because it's just a, uh, it's an enclosed motor. So it's not really going to be causing any issues as far as heat dissipation goes. It's all cosmetic. So, let's see how easily this wants to come open. Not very easily so far. No, not easy at all. Um, it may actually be easier to try to break the nut side. Too small. That's too big. Oh, I just love when that happens. So with screws like this, it's very important to get a bit that is the exact size in order to minimize the risk of stripping it out. So this bit's a pretty good fit. Actually both of these are a pretty good fit. One looks a little bit bigger, so we'll use this one. And let's see what we can do here. There we go. It just broke. For you, didn't break. That is really stiff. There we go. Now it's, now it's free. I hope they're not all like that. No, they're not all like that. Okay, good. This one, the nuts spinning on the other side. This is not uh, easy.
That was not easy at all. This one's still locked. Okay, so now let's see if the motor, oh first we got to remove that thing on the shaft there, it keeps the blade from going too far down. A little bit of dust there, actually there's just a fair bit of dust there, prefer that not to just go right into the bearing. All right, let's see if it's going to come apart. It's trying. Although it seems like the shell is stuck to the to the front uh, uh, to the front piece. I want the not the shell, the um, the stator. I want it to be on the back half. Okay, there goes all the oil. Okay, and it's not doing what I want it to do. Okay, this is going to be kind of difficult if I can't get that stator to, to break free from the front half because that absolutely will not come off this way without damaging the, the motor. Still not not cooperating. Ugh. I almost don't want to take this apart, but I want to show the way this is designed because it's kind of unique. Or at least I think it is. But That is just not having it. Ah, oh, there we go. It's starting to break free now. At least on that one side it was. Yeah, it's coming. Just a little bit of convincing. Okay. So, fortunately, it looks like... It looks like that's uh, in there pretty good. So nothing got damaged, but now, now it's stinking crooked. Now it's really got to come out of there. Okay, that came out. So it's uh, it's a decent motor. Looks relatively well made. Yeah, not bad. Now, um, what I wanted to show here is the way the shaft is designed. So this would sit, let's see if this is going to come out of here, perfect. So this sits in the motor like this and all the weight is on top of it. And the bottom of the shaft has like a ball from a ball bearing on it. And I just thought that was really clever because now as it sits here, the majority of the, the weight is on that little ball. And you can see in there, there's actually plenty of lubrication in there still. So this sits here like this. 
and uh, just kind of does its thing, and it's it's got a very good spin down time. It's a very uh, very clever design, and I kind of wonder why more motors aren't made this way, especially on fans, because when you have a fan, there is uh, you know the force from the blade moving the air is pushing the shaft back into the motor. If you had something like this, it probably wouldn't wear down the you know bearings as fast. Uh, but anyways, oh dear, the ball just came out, and now it's sitting in the bottom. Okay. Well, anyways, um, I'm not going to go in there and clean that because it's it's spinning just fine, and there's clearly plenty of lubrication in there. But I will clean and re-oil the, the front, or the top, whatever you want to call it. It's a vertical fan. I guess it's the top. So we'll do that, and then I will quickly clean out the front bearing here, the top bearing. I'm used to the horizontal fans. Now, interestingly enough, this actually seems to have a lot of grease packed in there. So, like I said, we're, we're talking, uh, this is, I believe this is made from 2008, so we're talking about 10 years of service and it still runs perfectly fine. Um, it really does seem like a respectable motor. Okay, so that's back in there. It looks like the tabs uh, that hold the stator in place are on the front here, or the top. It's kind of a weird design considering the cord input is on the back or the bottom. Make sure that ball is right where it should be. And now I'll take some fan oil for fans. It's right there on the box and yet some people still don't get it that this is the kind of oil for fans and the other kind of oil that you saw before when the cans fell is not for fans. I'll put a couple drops of oil in here and I'll put a drop of oil on the shaft just for actually you know what I'll clean the shaft why not. Yeah there was some gunk on there Alright, so I'll put a couple drops on the shaft just for good measure. And then I'll drop this into place. And there's like an air pocket here, so you kind of have to push it down with some force to, to get through that. And it's spinning very nicely. And now we'll put some oil. Not, not too much, so I don't want it to spray all over the windings and everything, although I don't really think that's an issue if it does, but I'd rather just not happen. Okay. And... We'll goof that up. It needs to go... I gotta pull this off again. Didn't align up the holes properly. As, as much as this motor seems decent, this design is stupid. The the side that holds it should be the side with the cord input. It did not line up flawlessly. It's like a hair off. It's probably going to prevent the screws from going in. There we go. Okay, put a little bit of oil in on here. Let that seep into it. And without even aligning it, it's already spinning pretty well. So I'll go ahead and put the screws back in. And then we'll align it. Um, forgot which uh, where the screws were. Well, I, I think it's here. I can kind of see where the bolts were. Yeah, I'm pretty confident this is how it went.
And then we'll begin the assembly after this, and that should be kind of interesting because it's half as difficult to get apart as it is to get it back together, one for a real thrill, especially because now it's been two days. So I, I was busy yesterday, didn't have time to get back to it yesterday. Um, so all of yesterday spanned, and then uh, all of today is spanned. It's late at night now, so I've had plenty of time to forget how it goes. So. Hopefully it's easier to get back together. I have suspicions it will be because I learned a few things about the way it was assembled in the process. So we'll tighten these up now. I don't know why these bolts don't uh, go through the nuts very freely. It certainly seems like they should, but anything's possible. After all, this is made from China. I never go crazy with the tightening, tight tightness of these screws. It's just not necessary. But you do want to make sure that they are all the same torque, or approximately. And obviously, we're just guessing here by hand. Okay. So now, um, That's spinning pretty good. Quite happy with that. So, I think it is now time to begin reassembling. Alright, we're going to begin with the control board. So, this... This is to sit in here, let's see here like this you want up to be on so that should I believe go like that yep And this piece, I don't remember what orientation this was in, so I'll have to just figure out what makes sense uh, when I get more of the pieces going here. So I'm going to leave that kind of loose so I can move that around still. In case you're interested, you can see the inner workings of the timer here. That's kind of neat.
that seems to be all working. I'll go get some more parts. This infamous clip needs to go back on the motor. I'll do that now before I forget. It's probably much easier to do it now than it is once it's assembled. Okay, that just didn't go on. Clip appears to be damaged. What the heck happened to this thing? It's like too big. I think I can fix that. Okay, here we go, that's fixed, and now let the fun begin uh, to get this thing back on. So, <laughs> okay, well, I know that this piece kind of went on like this. So let's start with that. Maybe I'll remove some of that dust from there. I don't want to remove too much. I don't want too much wiping here because there's grease on there. I don't want to remove it all. So we'll just do that. Hopefully that's good enough. And now um, I'm going to play the game with all the screws here. There's so many different ones. I'm going to have to look back on the video and see which ones go where. I believe these go here. I got some remnants of grease on them, so these definitely go here. Um, so I'll put that in. And I do have to note, just like the motor, all the oscillation mechanisms and such are well lubricated. Alright, so this thing here this, we got a screw there this goes on here like this And it sits up against there, I guess. So maybe it has like some freedom to move if it needed. And this grease is getting all over the place. I hate when it gets all over the tools. And this, I would I guess it feeds in through here.
seem to be the only logical explanation for that. And then... Oh, you know what I think has to happen? I think this white, this uh, oscillation arm has to get put on the motor first. Like that. And there was a screw that goes here. So now I think this is ready to slip on there. That seems about right. It's latched into place. And at this point this would make sense for this to kind of feed through here like so. Or does that make sense? It actually doesn't make sense because if it's like this, this mechanism is going to be scraping up against her as it oscillates and that we certainly don't want. Look at the video to see how it came apart. Because I just don't remember. So according to the video, the cord goes in here, which is a big difference. And, oh, there's something I've got to repair in here. Where did this just come from? I think that was right there. This has to get dealt with uh, because that's uh, kind of dangerous. So what I'm going to try to do is reopen this and put it back on because I think I think that can be done. If I could just get it on far enough. Nope, it's not going to be done. Let's see if I got a wire nut here that's going to fit on there. I really don't want to have to cut and restrip this because then, then I have to undo this whole thing to get more slack which is probably exactly what's going to have to happen oh perfect that just came out of there um, did that break the wire off? No, not really, but it's not a good connection either. I'm going to have to just cut it off. Start again. No point in messing around with something like this. This could be a uh, safety issue. Now, I'm not a big you know, safety person, but when it comes to electrical safety, 
you usually don't get a second chance, so you really should just do it right the first time. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to change this so that it's in the right setting. 16, I think, is what this is. Probably 18, maybe. I don't know. It's not cutting it, so we'll go to 18. Now we can do these together with one of these things. That one's spoiled. That one's plastic. That's pretty good. So now, um, still don't quite understand where these wires are supposed to sit in here. I guess they just sit in there just like that. possibly be with the wires just sitting there like that. I don't know. This is how it was in the video. I looked at the footage. This is exactly how it was. And then this went on. And this went on. And then this went on. going to be a little bit of a troublesome piece here. There we go. I guess that's okay. I think next time at the store I'm just going to get some new wire nuts because I don't have a good supply of them apparently. Okay, so now um, I think this front guard has to go in next. What's the problem now? This thing is just so designed to not be worked on. There's two screws that have to go in there. I 
think it's these screws. Let's see if these fit. Yeah, those seem like the right screws. Okay, and now the motor's got to get back in there. There's a screw hole there. I'm not sure exactly what that's for. Maybe this is a good time to put the base on. That actually seems like it's going to go on relatively easily. Okay, we'll leave that for later because I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what screws go in there. Um, okay, so the motor we're going to have to play with uh, the wiring thing again here. We're going to need I got to come with three satisfactory wire nuts, which around here proves to be kind of difficult. That one looks good. It's plastic. That one's plastic. That one looks good. That one's good. And then that one's plastic too. I don't know if these are going to be big enough for the three wire connection. Hopefully they are. So, we have to do Let's see here. These two go together. This is fairly simple. Start with the obvious ones here. Okay, and then we have these two. And I'm going to have to come with another wire nut. Plastic, 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 too big, too plasticky, worthless, too big, too big, too big, too big, way too big. I don't think I have enough satisfactory wire nuts. Maybe I can make the double connection with a bigger one. Or actually, I may have some somewhere else. I'm going to check. I don't have any. So, what I'm going to do here is restrip this. And remove this and hope that this connection will take a bigger one.
Okay, looks like it will. All right, so that should be all the wiring back together where it's supposed to be. I I'm getting too tired to continue. So let's just give this a quick test and make sure that it's working. Oh gosh, there's screws all over the place. Um, do a quick test here and that I am going to go to sleep and we'll have to prolong this for yet another day. One. Two. Three. Oscillate. That's ridiculous the way that is with the wires there. Okay, so now it's, I think this is day three, or even day four of this tower fan production. And it's just reaching the point where it needs to come to a close because I have other things I want to do. So, I'm going to output a valiant effort to get this finished tonight. Yeah, that involves remembering how the whole thing went together and at this point in the game I am starting to forget. Well, I know the motor goes on here. I guess maybe like this. Seems like it's a possible fit. Um, I know the capacitor looks like it would have a looks like it would mount somewhere. And this piece, huh? I don't know what in the world this is or where it went. Oh dear. Okay, so I had this this thing all wrong. That's what this piece is for, this mystery plastic piece. It kind of covers these connections. And then as I saw in the picture, the wire routes over here like this. So this is how it's supposed to go. Um, and now I still don't quite understand or like the way this wire is going to be flexing in here. But this is how it was. And so... Um, there's really nothing I can do about it. I still just don't think it seems very safe. Um, I would be concerned that this wire is going to uh, wear out relatively easily. But, you know, whatever. I'll probably never use it in oscill oscillation mode anyways. Uh, well, actually, you know what? I guess that's not too bad. Because this is going to move like now. Eh, it's not terrible. It's not as bad as it was before now, because it's put together correctly. Um, but I'm still not too thrilled with it. Anyway, so that's that's how it's supposed to go. So now I'll put this back in here. And this, this the whole thing is just so greasy. You know, I'd expect that if you're working on an engine or something, but not a stinking fan. Grease is just getting everywhere. Okay, that's on, and this is now on correctly. So, um, with that ironed out, I'm going to put the base on again. And I also went back and looked at the pictures of the motor, because, you know, that's the more intellectual thing, rather than just yelling at it because you don't understand it. And the, the capacitor, I, I have this wrong too. The motor 
goes on like this and the capacitor mounts over here. Um, I think just like this. Now, with which screw is anyone's guess? Because I really couldn't see the pictures, I mean the screws in the pictures all that well. Looks like we have These are mostly all the same. Alright, we're going to use this screw. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Next time this gets dirty, if I end up using it that much, just going to get a couple gusts of compressed air and hope that does the trick because this is not an adventure I want to go on ever again. This is just not meant to be serviced. <laughs> okay. It doesn't seem right, but there's no other way for it to go. So, that's how it's going to go. And now the connections, I believe, just kind of sit over here. And the motor, this actually feeds up on this side. The motor sits in here like this. sure these all these wires stay well below here so that they don't have the potential to go up into the fan blade and cause a freak show this has to kind of be like that Alright, that looks pretty good to me. So, I'm going to go ahead and screw down the motor now. It's a little tight here, but I, I think that's just how it is. And this is... I don't like that it's right up against this metal piece here, but I guess it doesn't move all that much. I'll probably never use this in oscillation anyways, but... Just a little concerning to see how not really safe a lot of these appliances are that are floating around people's houses. Okay, there's five screws and four holes. Yep. Okay. No problem. Something will just fall apart later.
Well, this is going to be interesting. The uh, hole is not lined up on the bracket with the hole in the motor. Oh, but it threads anyways. That's interesting. Oh, the wonders of made in China. Okay. That's the motor on there. I want to go ahead and test this again just to make sure that everything is working before I finish putting it all back together. Okay, so we're going to start with one, two, three. Soft sweating just flying, and uh, can't really see the flex points on the wire, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. It looks like it's not scraping against anything. All right, we're going with that. Okay, so now. Now we get to deal with these things. So we gotta. Oh, this is a mess. Gotta lay this back down and see how this mounts. So this somehow. I guess sits up there like that. And this has a little bit less slack than is ideal. I want to make sure that's not a problem because if this pulls up over time and then you know protrudes into the area of the blade's rotation path, that's surely a disaster waiting to happen. So I want to make sure that this is not pulling on itself beyond what's reasonable. So this one is definitely for that side and this one is definitely for this side. And to its credit, it does actually do a pretty good job at securing the wires out of the way of the blade's rotational path. And just so you can see what I'm talking about down here. It's got that little tab on the bottom and it really locks everything in place. So I think that's pretty good. So now, I believe we use these screws, well, or using these screws, whether they're the right ones or not, I, I don't know. As long as it holds it in place, I don't really care. that side, we got this side, and we're using up all these screws so I think it's safe to say these were the right screws.
And now, let the fun begin up here at the top. So we know that this has to fit on, on like that, such as how it's doing. So there's going to be two screws Two screws right in there, which I'm going to guess are okay. Now we got a whole bunch of screws. Hopefully they can work. We've got. I want to say it's these screws. We'll go with these. Okay, that's great. Or are these, because we do got to watch out for this because actually these holes are pretty big. Now they see these screws don't go down in there so these screws are probably the ones that went there and this piece. So I'm going to set those aside in there. And that piece that you couldn't see was the back grill. And so that means, see this is the bearings mount. It's gonna kind of go up there like that. Although this, this goes here to what does this do? Sit like that, and then this. Oh, I see what that what that one machine screw left is for. That's going to sit on there like that. All right. So I'm going to put these two screws in here. Heck, got it. Screws are all the same. Okay. This could go back like that. And then I think this would make the most sense to put on next. Although I want to so I want to clean this. Um, no, I don't want to clean this because it was working fine, so I'm going to leave it alone. And screw this in here. tighten this up yet until I get the actually I have to put the blade in first because uh, just because it's how it has to work 
So I'm going to get the blade. I am going to wipe off the top of the shaft because, well, actually, you know what? It doesn't look all that bad. There's like a grease on there, and I'm not sure that I want to take it off. Yeah, it's not binding at all. I think I'm just going to leave that alone. So I'll slip this back onto the motor. Which is going to prove to be a fun task. And you can't be careful enough because this this is rubber here. So if you force this or anything, you'll just break it. There we go. Tighten up the set screw. That screwdriver is way too big. I don't even know why that's out. Okay, and I'm going to add a drop of oil into this here. Okay, and now put this on, and I'll see what the spin down time is like. If it's not good enough, then I'll clean this out. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. I'm noticing this is broken down here. And that wasn't for me because I was not, not being aggressive with that when I was cleaning it. I'm being a little aggressive with it now because I'm getting irritated, but not when I was cleaning it. So, um, I'm make sure this is lined up the best it can be. And then I'll put these screws in up here. So this piece is not aligning the way I want it to be. Oh, that's not too bad. There we go, I think that's pretty good. It doesn't move again. Alright, I'm happy with that. The spin down is going to be different if it's vertical. Yeah, I guess it is a little different. Alright, so that's good. That's spinning well. And then maybe I'll put another drop of oil up in there uh, before I close it back up. Alright, now we got this piece. Screwdriver.
Okay. And then we have this piece here is going to come over and go like that, I believe. So I'll tighten this up here. That's hard to tighten. So actually, I think that's it. We've got how many screws do we have left? We have four screws left. And you know what? Now we have six screws left. I stand corrected. Well, these two I think are going to go down on the base. These two I thought went in there, but I'm thinking the machine screws are going to go in here because that's going into metal, so it would make more sense if, if that was these screws. Yeah, it is. So those go there, and and these screws are going to go down here to keep the base on and so we'll have two mystery screws left over so if the thing breaks down at some point um, I guess we'll know why and <laughs> okay are these not the right screws? No, they are. It just wasn't pushed up far enough. Okay, that's the base on. Yeah, I'm not really sure where these other two screws go. Oh, well. It's going to remain a mystery. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't really care. I think it's it's fine without those two screws. So before I put the back cover on, let's just go ahead and give it one more final test to make sure it's not shaking or anything. Move the camera up. And here's low. Now it's not really, actually it is moving somewhere. I don't really understand how these fans work. I don't know what makes the air move. I don't, I don't know. I gotta, I guess I should do some research. But it is, it is working and it's moving here. And you know it's actually quite quiet. Okay, medium. And high. Decent amount of noise on high, but it is, it's moving a good amount of air, and you know what? It's running pretty smooth, it's not really shaking at all. And oscillations. Seems to be oscillating just fine. Turn it off and then we'll turn the whole thing off and do a spin down. I find that spin down to be pretty satisfactory. Uh, but I will go ahead and drop another drop of oil into the 
upper bearing here just to make sure it's adequately lubricated okay. now it's making a little bit of a scraping sound I don't know where that's coming from. It's coming from the motor. Well, it's just a little bearing noise, I guess. Alright, I'm satisfied with that. Let's close it up and move on to something else because this has eaten up enough of my evenings this is the last one Play some games with the clips here. Oh, well, that's interesting. How in the world do they expect you to do that? So it's got little tabs here. Um, these tabs here, right there, the plastic has to go in between the side and the tab, but yet this, in order to latch, is going to pull it in, so it's not going to do that. So, that's stupid to say the least. Um, I'm not sure how, well, I guess just like that, we'll kind of force it. I don't know, I like to force things, but sometimes you don't have a choice. And then these screws here, at the top, we're going to use these two machine screws because that seems to be the most logical choice. And those are not threading in there. No chance is that going to thread into there. This one seems to thread in just fine. So then what's the problem here? I just locked up again. Well, I'm just going to put it in there anyway. It's okay. It's got some hair on it. Let's see if I can remove that. Ugh. It's actually in the Alpha Crying Out Loud. There is hair in the top here, you know, we're just gonna cut it. Okay. And now we can put these old things back in here.
Okay. And this is on off center there. All right. I think that's it. There is a mystery here, as we have two screws remaining. Not sure where they came from or where they go. But uh, well, they're not going back in the fan, that's for sure. So, here we are. It's done. Let's test it out. Power it up. Low. Moving a decent amount of air. Medium. High. Not bad at all. Oscillate. So the oscillation is kind of off center here. Actually, it's relatively powerful. Okay, off. And I'll turn it around so we can see the spin down time a little better. Or at all, perhaps. And eh, we missed it. Try it again. It's not really showing up well. You'll just have to trust me, the spin down time is decent. Okay, so that's it for this one. Closing out this video. The Pelinus Medea Tower Fan is now cleaned and serviced.